This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Good to be back. Well, no, it's not good to be back. It's just I'm back. Okay? This is Alex Bennett. I uh, was in, uh, yeah, there, Vermont. See? You can see the pictures and everything. Anyway, hi. How are you? What's happening? Um, i got a bunch of things to talk to you about, and then something I want to play you because I think it's important that you hear it. Um, But... um, First of all, it's good to have Rob back doing a a promo, and we're hoping and praying that there are going to be more promos very soon. So we're 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 waiting for that, and um, uh, that's nice. Uh, I spent the weekend uh, going up to Vermont, uh, where we have some friends, and maybe in a couple days I'll show you some video from up there. I shot a lot of it using the uh, uh, using this. Actually, using uh, the uh, GoPro on a uh, on what's called the Karma Grip, which makes it turns it into a. Uh, in fact, you can see what happens. It comes alive if you turn it on here. See, watch it. T- watch it come alive. You see that? It just came alive and it turns itself on, and then you can uh, you can shoot with it, and it keeps things really level. Uh, and uh, you're, you know, it's very smooth, and it's uh, it's what they used to call in the business a um, a steady cam, but this is you know where the steady cam was this. I remember the first steady cams that came out. They were big, giant, uh, bulky things that you had to strap onto your body, and you put the camera in front of you, and it it kept things steady, and uh, that was that was okay, but this thing works as well as a steady cam and it really get, allows you to do some very smooth video so i have some very great video i shot up there it is um uh, you know if i had somewhere else to live beside here and i could afford to do it and i could somehow uh, uh you know i could probably do all my stuff up there my shows and stuff up there uh but the bottom line is is that i'm i'm uh it's uh, it, it's just a beautiful, wonderful place. And uh, in my dotage, as it were, I don't know that I wouldn't want to go up there and, uh, and uh, you know, live up there. Of course, as the years go on, I'm going to need more and more hospitals. And uh, the hospitals aren't as good up there as you get here in New York. Of course, the doctors don't strike fear into you. You know me, I am afraid of death. You, I've told you that before. And um, I, um, I know that I'm at 77 going on 78. That's scary. Uh, that I'm at that point in my life where the only thought I have in my mind is, what is it that's going to get me? You know, I wake up in the morning with a cough and I go, could this be the beginning? Could this be, is this going to turn into something else like pneumonia and then congestive heart failure and then I'm dead. Ba-bum. And so I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm worried about that. So I've got a, uh, this week I've got to do a, what's called a PSA test for prostate because my PSA jumped up about, about a point in a year. And it could have gone up because there was something wrong with the test. With the, you know, it was inaccurate. Sometimes you get a lot of false positives and things like that. And it's still not in an area where you worry about prostate cancer. But my doctor said, look, let my urologist, let's do it in six months and see if it's doing anything or if it's anything to worry about. And if it does go up a little bit, hey, we'll give you a sonic sonogram, uh, give you a prostate sonogram and make sure there's nothing going on there. Because my age, it can go up uh, just because you're old, okay? But I am, I have to take the blood test tomorrow. <clears throat> and I know the next couple of days for me, because I just don't know how to handle these things, is going to be a living hell. And uh, I, I don't, and so does girlfriend. She knows what she's getting ready for. 
so I don't know. I can I can actually go online and find out what my test results are before I go see my doctor on Monday because I made an appointment to see him Monday so we can talk about the results or celebrate the fact that there was no results worth talking about. Uh, but I can go online and get them. So then I'm, I'll probably get them like about Friday or maybe I'll get them Saturday. And then I've got until Monday to worry about whatever that number is. If it's gone up a lot or if it's gone down, I just... I'm going to go out and have a happy whoop party, but I don't think it'll go down. I, well, um, I, I got to know Spalding Gray. I got to meet Spalding Gray. I don't want to say I knew him because I, I only had him on my show. But I had Spalding Gray on my show. And you remember Spalding Gray did uh, Swimming in Cambodia? <clears throat> he was a monologist, and he would do one-man shows. And... Um, he, uh, we, we were talking about the fact that I, whenever I would go on a trip, would somehow a week beforehand, I would start worrying about every aspect of the trip. I mean, how am I going to make this plane in time to make this train, to make this, to get my pick up this car, you know, and all of that. And I'm thinking of the worst things that can go wrong. And he said, I'm the same way. I said, is that why you swam to Cambodia? No, I, I said, I'm, he says, I'm the same way. And he says, you know what it is? I said, what? He says, we're control freaks. What we want to do is we want to assume all the worst scenarios so that if that then happens, we're prepared for it. And so me with this blood test, hey, it could just not go up at all. It could even go down. There could be a, 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 the last one I got could have been artificially high. Uh, and and there's nothing, you know, and even if it goes up, you, you can check, and uh, in 75% of the cases where it goes up dramatically, uh, the people don't have prostate cancer, okay? 75%. So this test is iffy, you know, uh, And but I'm worrying about it. I'm worried that it's going to go sky high, and every, I'm always thinking the worst-case scenario. I'm not thinking, oh, it'll be nice uh, because I'll get the figures and then we'll be able, if they do go up a little bit, we can check and make sure I don't have prostate cancer. If I do, then we can do something about it and I'll live another 15 years, right? So uh, uh, tomorrow I have that test. So, so I will be, you know, inconsolable for until I, I get the results. And when I get the results, if they're high, I'm going to be really inconsolable. And if they're low, I'm going to go out and have a happy whoop -de party. But anyway, be that as it may. Uh, so we go up to uh, Vermont, and it's just beautiful up there. It's just wonderful. And we did a couple of things, and I want that's why I want to show you the video of it. There are two reasons to go to um, Vermont. Uh, we go to Shelburne, which is near, what's that big town where, you know, uh, what's his name, Bernie Sanders lives. Um, uh, Burlington. Uh, it's near Burlington. And you say, well, why would you go to Shelburne? Well, being with Shelburne's beautiful. It's got a place called Shelburne Bay where my friends live, and they live right on the bay. And it's, oh, it's just, it's heaven. Okay? But then on top of that, they took us a couple of places. We've, we've been to one of them before. It's called Shelburne Farms. And it was literally designed and put together by the same guy who did Central Park. Olm, Edward Olmsted. How do I remember that name all of a sudden? Anyway, um, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful park. And uh, it has a farm. It's, it's called Shelburne Farms. And it, it's, uh, it, it's just, it's wonderful. Okay? That's all I can say about it. Beautiful, bucolic. And I did some nice video there, which I'll be love to show you. And then they took us to another place called the Shelburne Museum. Now, you think of a museum, ah, it's a building, and you go inside, and there are a bunch of pictures of dogs playing poker or whatever. No, this is, uh, it's hard to describe. But, for instance, I have a picture on, on my Facebook page, which I am no longer going to contribute to. I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, but... Uh, uh, they have, they have, uh, the, there was a boat called the Ticonderoga that went on Lake Champlain from Lake Champlain to various places. And uh, they have this boat literally on the property. 
it's propped up and you get on it and you go in it. It's been restored and it's just wonderful. But not only that, they've completely redone a railroad station, complete with an old railroad train. And then all these buildings of various types, uh, I'd say there may be 20 or 30 of them throughout the property. And each one is a museum in and of itself. And they even have, we didn't go to it, but I want to go to it next time, a circus museum. So if you ever have a time that you, on, the, on this coast and you want to go somewhere, Shelburne is the must-see destination because the Shelburne Museum is just exquisite and Shelburne Farms is just wonderful. So don't, don't say to me, you know, why'd you go up to Shelburne, Vermont? And I would, I would love to live up there. I mean, geez, it's just, it's just beautiful, just terrific. Okay. Uh, I got something I'm going to play here, and I hope uh, I hope they let me play it on uh, on Facebook. By the way, we are not on Facebook uh, with the show tonight. We're Facebook Live. Uh, 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 my Facebook, uh, uh, a, a Bennett, my private page. The reason being that I have decided that's it. I, I really don't want to deal with that page any longer. I'm not going to post to it. And if I say I'm not going to post to it, I'm also not going to put this show up on, on, uh, on Facebook.com forward slash A Bennett. If you want to write stuff on there, go ahead and write stuff on there. I'm just not participating, right? Uh, at least for the time being. I, I don't, because I've just had far too many trolls come along and I'm just tired of the trolls, and I'm tired of, of uh, uh, you know, maintaining it. And the only reason I, I really have it is to run the videos. And at that, you know, I mean, I don't see that it gives me that many people anyway to run the show live on video. So I may as well put it somewhere else and maybe drive people to another page and that other page where we are right now broadcasting, I look at it, we're broadcasting live, is um, uh, facebook.com forward slash gabnet live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you go there uh, a a every night, you'll be able to see it live. And afterwards, you'll be able to watch it as well on uh, not only on Facebook Live, but you'll also be able to watch it because we post it on uh, gabnet.net up in the right-hand corner. Uh, there's a video of, of our most recent show. So you have all that to check out, okay? There, there are all those ways. Of, and also over on the right-hand side of the page is the on-demand section, and the video is listed there as well. So you have a lot of ways of doing it, and I really want to drive more people to gabnet.net, and I want to drive more people to the to the uh, the Facebook page that doesn't really have a lot of people who are, you know, uh, posting. Okay, you can post on the Gabnet Live page, but uh, it's just not the same. It's it's not it's kind of squirrely and over to the side and. So conversations don't happen as much. And, and quite frankly, I'm just as happy with that. I don't, I'm going to look into other stuff, and I may go back to the Facebook page. Uh, if I can do it, somebody suggested that I can limit it to where the only person who can post is me and nobody else. I might do that. I, I just don't know what I'm going to do with it. But all I know is I'm just sick and tired of it. So, um, And... Uh, also, I have these things called followers, and in the last month or something, I've had about 100 followers drop, and I think it's because if you're a follower, every time I post on that page, um, it uh, every time I post on that page, um, it, it sends a thing out to all my followers saying, hey, I'm doing a live broadcast. And they, some people just don't want to get that, so they unfollow me, so... You know, I don't need it, and uh, uh, I'm 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 just as happy just doing a show here. Maybe for the time being, I don't even know if I'm happy doing the show. I'm I'm trying to figure that one out. But Vermont, that's where I would love to live. I'm telling you, it's wonderful up there. Anyway, listen, I want to play something for you, and I don't know. We may we may get cut off, but I took this one from C-SPAN, so I don't think. 
there will be a problem playing it. See, sometimes when I show a clip from CNN or something like that, all of a sudden Facebook goes, hey, you can't run that. You can't run that. If I did it on um, YouTube, which is another place I could do the show live, uh, I wouldn't have that same problem. But in this case, uh, they sometimes get pissy about it. Well, this isn't from CNN or any of the commercial outfits. This was taken off of CNET, not CNET, uh, C-SPAN. CNET, I used to work for CNET. Uh, uh, this is from uh, uh, C-SPAN. And what it was is last night, John McCain accepted an award. And in his acceptance speech, which lasts about 10 minutes here, he railed against the current political atmosphere. And I got to tell you, this guy's terrific. This guy, this guy finally, in his last years of his life, he knows his days are kind of numbered. He sounds a little tired here. Has just proved himself to be a hero in every single respect. So let's go back to last night and uh, let's see what... Uh, what he has to say, I think you're going to be amazed by it. Listen to it. I think you'll enjoy it. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe, my old dear friend. Thank you, Joe, my old dear friend, for those mostly undeserved kind words. Vice President... Biden and I have known each other for a lot of years now, more than 40 if you're counting. We knew each other back when we were young and handsome and smarter than everyone else, but were too modest to say so. <laughs> Joe was already a senator and I was the Navy's liaison officer to the Senate. My duties included, as he mentioned earlier, escorting Senate delegations on overseas trips. And in that capacity, I supervised the de delegation's luggage which could require now and again, when no one of lower rank was available for the job, that I carry someone else's bag. Once or twice, that turned out to be the young senator from Delaware. I've resented it ever since. <laughs> Joe has heard me joke about that before. I hope he has heard, too, my profession of gratitude for his friendship and love these many years. It's meant a lot to me. We, <coughs> we served in the Senate together for over 20 years during some eventful times as we passed from young men to the fossils who appear before you this evening. <laughs> we didn't always agree on the issues. We often argued, sometimes passionately, but we believed in each other's patriotism and the sincerity of each other's convictions we believed in the institution we were privileged to serve in. We believed in our mutual responsibility to help make the place work and to cooperate in finding solutions to our country's problems. We believed in our country and in our country's indispensability to international peace and stability and to the progress of humanity. And through it all, whether we argued or agreed, Joe was good company. You all know he is good company. <laughs> so thank you, old friend, for your company and your service to America. Thank you, too, to the National Constitution Center and everyone associated with it for this award. Thank you for that video and for all the two generous compliments paid to me this evening. I'm aware of the prestigious company the Liberty Medal places me in. I'm humbled by it, and I'll try my best not to prove too unworthy of it. Some years ago, I was present at an event where an earlier Liberty Medal recipient spoke about America's values and the sacrifices made for them. It was 1991. And I was attending the ceremony commemorating the 50th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. The World War II veteran, estimable patriot, and good man, President George Herbert Walker Bush, gave a moving speech at the USS Arizona Memorial. 
I remember it very well. His voice was thick with emotion as he neared the end of his address. I imagine he was thinking not only of the brave Americans who lost their lives on December 7, 1941, but of the friends he had served with and lost in the Pacific, where he, hit, where he had been the Navy's youngest aviator. Look at the water here, clear and quiet, he directed. One day, what now seems another lifetime, it, wraps it, it wrapped its arms around the finest sons any nation could ever have, and it, <clears throat> and it carried them to a better world. He could barely get out the last line. May God bless them, and may God bless America, the most wondrous nation on earth. The most... <clears throat> The most wondrous land on earth indeed. I've had the good fortune to spend 60 years in service to this wondrous land. It's not been perfect service, to be sure. And there were probably times when the country might have benefited a little less of my help. But I've tried to deserve the privilege as best I can. And I've been repaid a thousand times over with adventures, with good company, with the satisfaction of serving something more important than myself, of being a bit player in the extraordinary story of America. And I am so grateful. <clears throat> what a privilege it is to serve this big, boisterous, brawling, intemperate, striving, daring, beautiful, bountiful, brave, mag magnificent country. With all our flaws, all our mistakes, with all the frailties of human nature, as much on display as our virtues, with all the rancor and anger of our politics, we are blessed. We are living in the land of the free, the land where anything is possible, the land of the immigrant's dream, the land with the storied past forgotten in the rush to the imagined future, the land that repairs and reinvents itself, the land where a person can escape the consequences of a self-centered youth and know the satisfaction of sacrificing for an ideal. The land where you can go from aimless rebellion to a noble cause and from the bottom of your class to your party's nomination for president. <laughs> <clears throat> We are blessed, and we've been a blessing to humanity in turn. The international order we helped build from the ashes of World War and that we defend to this day has liberated more people from tyranny and poverty than ever before in history. This wondrous land, This wondrous land has shared its treasures and ideals and shed the blood of its finest patriots to help another, to help make another better world. And as we did so, we made our own civilization more just, freer, more accomplished, and prosperous than the America that existed when I watched my father go off to war on December 7th, 1941. To fear the world we have organized and led the three quarters of a century, to abandon the ideals we have advanced around the globe, to refuse the obligations of international leadership and our duty to remain the last best hope of Earth for the sake of some half-baked, spurious nationalism cooked up by people who would rather find scapegoats than solve problems Is as, un, is as unpatriotic as an attachment to any other tired dogma of the past that Americans consigned to the ash, cheap, the ash heap of history. We live in a land made of ideals, not blood and soil. We are the custodians of those ideals at home and their champion abroad. 
We've done great good in the world. That leadership has had its costs, but we have become incomparably powerful and wealthy as we did. We have a moral obligation to continue in our just cause, and we would bring more than shame on ourselves if we don't. We will not thrive in a world where our leadership and ideals are absent. We wouldn't deserve to. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. I have served America's cause, the cause of our security and the security of our friends, the cause of freedom and equal justice all my adult life. I haven't always served it well. I haven't even always appreciated what I was serving. But among the few compensations of old age is the acuity of hindsight. I see now that I was part of something important that drew me along in its wake, even when I was diverted by other interests. I was, knowingly or not, along for the ride as America made the future better than the past. And I've enjoyed it, every single day of it, the good ones and the not so good ones. <laughs> I've been inspired by the service of better patriots than me. I've seen Americans make sacrifices for our country and our causes and for people who were strangers to them, but for our common humanity. Sacrifices that were much harder than the service ever asked of me. And I've seen the good they've done, the lives they've freed from tyranny and injustice, the hope they encouraged, the dreams they made achievable. May God bless them. May God bless America and give us the strength and wisdom, the generosity and compassion to do our duty for this wondrous land and for the world that counts on us. With all its suffering and danger, the world still looks to the example and leadership of America to become another better place. What greater cause could anyone ever serve. Thank you again for this honor. I'll treasure it. That's pretty amazing. He, uh, he took a real swipe at, uh, at, uh, <laughs> at Donald Trump. I mean, uh, if you don't think that was a swipe at Donald Trump, you're amazingly crazy. Uh, so, I mean, just a, a you know, a, just a really great speech and I wanted you to hear it you know and and what was terrific about it was that uh, I was able to share it with you uh, and that I took out time to download it and play it here on the air it's just amazing that we got a few people watching it now you know a lot of people are capable of, of seeing this show right now but it wasn't the kind of numbers that I would expect to watch that kind of speech and by the way, if you're wondering where we are and you're listening to us on um, uh, gabnet.net, because that's where the audio is of this show, and you want to know why the video isn't on Facebook, uh, my Facebook page, because I've decided to take a time off from my Facebook page. Uh, it just is not, uh, uh, I, I just haven't been that happy with the uh, uh, with what's been going on on that page and so on. And so we have put this now on Facebook Live, and I hope when you come to Facebook Live, you will follow us and uh, uh, add to the numbers there. Uh, it's not that I'm going to post anything here either, but I am going to post the live programs because, quite frankly, that's the core of everything that I'm doing at this point in my life, and it is the core of GabNet, okay? Uh, so I hope you'll join us every night here at GabNet Live in order to see the video. And if you don't want to, well, uh, you know, fuck you. I don't care. Let's see here. Let me, I've turned on the phones and I don't, nobody's calling yet. So uh, we didn't do a show on Friday. And thanks to uh, 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 Jack Bishop, I have to always remember his radio name. Jack Bishop for uh, and Amy Manuel for uh, taking the time slot and doing it for three hours. They did their their time slot and my time slot. And uh, you know, uh, Jack, if you'd like this time slot, you can have it. You know, I'll find some other time slot. I could I could stand to change time slots. So anyway, 
So now I'm waiting for somebody to call. I guess if people forgot that I was here. By the way, uh, earlier tonight, I didn't think we were going to have a show at all. And the reason was everywhere around the world, Skype was down. Okay. Now, of course, Skype will never admit to what it was or say what happened. Uh, they were sending out emails to people and saying, sorry, you know, we're hoping that you're, uh, uh, you're okay, you know, and so on. So anyway, uh, but uh, Skype was down for, for several hours, and I didn't, I didn't know if we'd get on tonight because, quite frankly, those people aren't very good at fixing stuff. Hey, look who we have here. Now, uh, move your camera uh, down a little bit so we can see your whole face. Because, yeah, there we go. See that handsome beard. How you doing? Your mother passed. Uh, and, yes. And for that, we yes. send our condolences, you know. Thank you. But, Thank you. Um, we yeah. had a funeral with her on on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, now, unfortunately, she... I can't see myself. Oh, here I go. Okay. Yeah. How old? How old was she? She was uh, 94 years old. 94 years old. <clears throat> well, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't know about you, but when I lost my mother at 100, I, I was really conflicted on how sorry I should feel because I had her for so many years, you know, more than anybody else has had their parents, you know, and uh, I know people lost their parents. I lost my father when he was 59. I was still in my, in my 20s. Uh, but my mother lived to be 100, and when she went, I went, you know, I, am I going to feel sorry for her, or should I feel happy for her? That, you know, she had a lot of great years and, and had more life than anybody else had. So, you know. I feel very much the same. Yeah. Uh, my mother, in her last year, uh, had such uh, dementia yeah. that she, she was not able to communicate at all. Yeah. Uh, either to us or or could she receive anything that we said yeah. to her? Yeah, and uh, it was just uh, torture for for us, and I would assume it was for her too. Well, my mother had dementia as well, not Al not Alzheimer's, and people should know there's a difference. Uh, um, there's a there's a medical component to Alzheimer's. It's a form of dementia, but it's a far far more terrible form of dementia believe it or not but my mother had dementia too and you know it's 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 hard to deal with you know it, 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 you're seeing somebody kind of slowly going somewhere else uh and uh, it's not the same mother that you no. always had you know and it, it, but but alzheimer's must be an especially cruel disease for families because you know the those people don't even remember that, you know, you're their son, mm -hmm. you know, There's, you know, so anyway, well, you know, I'm sorry to hear about it. On the other hand, I'm happy that she lived to be that old. Yes. You know? And I'm, I'm happy that the, the torture is over. Yeah. That's yeah. The way I feel There's a certain it. relief in that. Yes. Yes. Hello, Rob. How are you this evening? I'm okay. How about you? Yeah, turn your mic down a little bit. You're over modulating for some reason. You're... Hmm. Not here. Not there. Huh. Not with the promos that I do. Let me check to see if maybe it's uh, Skype. Let me lower it. It's Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Because that might be exactly where it is. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, Does that sound better? Uh, yeah. So Talk stop. to me yeah. now. Check one, two, three, Talk, four. Turn it up a little bit. How's that? That, that's that, that's that, fine. That's that's about right. Yeah, it was Skype then because it's yeah. always Skype. Yeah, <laughs> it's always Skype. No, it's um, Phil tonight. I don't know. I have hmm. no idea. Maybe he has. Uh, he's a little bit of shame because uh, because uh, it looks like the Democrats were able to get something get get a health care at least for two years approved. To keep Obamacare around. Yeah. You know what it might also be? You're a little bassy. No, I'm going to touch this. Yeah. Let's let, let's touch up your system there. I, I don't want to play with that. Oh, there it is. That's much better. Uh, I didn't do anything. Oh, you didn't do anything. 
just backed away from the mic. Yeah, that's if you stay back away a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so what were you going to say that he's he's probably ashamed of Trump? I mean, no, because uh, the Democrats seem to be able to, with bipartisan support, be able to um, come up with the money and everything to fix Obamacare for the next two years. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it's never going to go away. Yeah. Never uh, gonna go away. You know what? I, when I was especially, well, did you hear that speech by McCain that I played? Absolutely beautiful. I heard it earlier today. Yeah. Wow. You yes. know, wow. Mm -hmm. What a history lesson. Yeah. You know, um, there were there were many years that I liked McCain, uh, in, in spite of the fact that he was a Republican. And then I came to dislike him when he ran for president because I think he gave up. He sold himself out, you know, and now to, to accept the vice presidential candidate like that. Yeah. And now at this point in his life where, you know, admittedly he's dying, uh, he has suddenly decided to come forward and do one last courageous act, you know. And he really took, I think, Trump in that speech to the woodshed. He didn't say Trump, but we knew what he was talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing speech. So, what have you? I thought it was very important huh? that, he, that he spoke about the vice president. And the vice president was there. At well, the same time. Yeah. Well, he and Biden were really good friends. You know, they were incredible friends, uh, which which shows you that, you know, it isn't all politics in Washington. You know, just because you're a Republican doesn't mean you don't hang out with a Democrat. And if you won't hang out with a Democrat because he is a Democrat, then fuck you. You know, I mean, we'd like to think that all these people talk to each other. So where is everybody? Isn't you know we we don't uh, I don't know where Phil is. Phil Phil usually writes me if he's not going to uh, if he's not going to do anything. And he's not. I mean, he's on Skype. It's uh, he's you know yellow. Oh, he, he he's yellow. Yeah, we're not talking about cowardice, folks. We're talking no. about the, <laughs> little. Did you try? You did. You, you should have tried Skype earlier today. It was maddening. I couldn't get it to go online. So finally, I went on to the Internet and I looked up his Skype down and there I come to this page where hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are saying, you know, from all over the world, I'm not getting it here in Spain. I'm not getting it here in Bangkok. I'm not getting it here in uh, in New York City. Mm. Uh, uh, apparently, Skype was down all around the world. Wow. Yeah. Now, something like that could be a hack. You know. But, of course, Microsoft's never going to admit that they had a problem. Oh, we meant to do that. We were testing something and blah, blah, blah. Wanted to see if anybody liked us. You know. Hey, has anybody been watching the new Curb Your Enthusiasm? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I think it's a little bit flat. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty flat. <laughs> it's a little bit flat. Like, I'm enjoying it because I like, you know, the character. Yeah. Of him, but it's it seems just a little bit flat. I agree with you. Parts of it were almost like I felt he was recycling Seinfeld. There were moments yes. in the last night's show where I looked over at Marjorie, and she doesn't, she didn't never watch Seinfeld. And I said, if you watch Seinfeld, you know that that stuff he's doing there was very what they would have done on Seinfeld. You know? Yeah. I mean, I didn't see last night's yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see it uh, yeah. later this week. But, um, you know, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm, but it's just not as, like, crazy. Well, the, whole th not the whole thing about the fatwa and uh, all of that, it's, it, it, it's, it's pushing it a little bit. You know? Yeah. It's kind of taking it a little over the top. Maybe that's what it is. But like, it, the brilliance of him going to Dodger Stadium with a hooker so he can get in. Oh, that's the best. Right? 
I mean, yeah. and she's bitching about where they're sitting, and he goes, he runs into the the guys from the the, the golf club that he wants to join, and I mean, it's just it's classic. He stops off by his father's house with the pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's genius. It's genius. But this is not, to me, not genius. It's good. I'm enjoying it, but it's not as genious. It, it, it because we're it, yeah there, there I, was, because it's been gone for so long. Yeah. And it's back and it's new that you go. I was looking forward to it so much because it had been gone for so long. Yeah. Maybe if it had been the following year, it would have been better or perceived differently. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The I I. It's not bad. That's not the point. It's still better than most of the stuff that's out there. Right. Right. You know, but it's it does. It's not living up to our expectations. Yeah, sure. And he raised our expectations so damn high. You know. Yeah. Even the Seinfeld reunion stuff was really good. Yeah. You know? Didn't think I was gonna. I would like that, but it actually was very. Oh, good. Oh, the year that he was doing the producers. Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, that was just awesome. Which was almost believable. Uh, yeah. Because that show, when it was on Broadway, constantly was changing cast, and then you would have somebody you knew, like David Schwimmer, or they, Larry they David. Up, they let. It was the greatest thing in the world because they led up to it with all the rehearsals and everything. And that night, it was actually. It was actually Mel Brooks doing exactly what they did in the play. It was he was just trying to bring the show down? <laughs> it's like, oh, any minute now they're going to be coming out. They're going to be all fired up, and they all loved it. And yeah. he was like, oh, he and his wife. It was right before she died. Uh, it's mm. yeah, before Anne Bancroft died. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy, that was a marriage they never thought would last. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. So maybe because I'm not running this on our main page, uh, on the Facebook page, we're not getting callers. Is that could that be? Nah, I don't think so. Boy, I'm worried about Phil. You know, no. I always worry about Phil when I do, when I don't hear from somebody who's normally a regular, like Jeff. Like Jeff now always writes me when he's not going to be on the show because he knows I'll worry a little bit about him. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, I didn't think I'd be on tonight because, but the Yankee game was at five instead of eight. And I didn't tune in until eight because I've been running around. I just got home. I was in Virginia Beach the last couple of days. Yeah. And I got home this afternoon, worked for a few hours. Uh, we're putting in a tile backsplash in our kitchen. So I had to run to Lowe's, mm -hmm. came back expecting, okay, it's eight o'clock. The game's going to start. And the game was in the seventh inning. So, <laughs> you can't tell anymore with this, this TV it, schedule. It, it's on Fox. It's on FS1. It's on TBS. It's what time? They make it eight o'clock. They make it five o'clock. Wait a minute. Is this the World Series yet? Oh, this is the American League Championship oh, Series. Oh God! This. You know. Do you remember? You never had any of that bullshit. Just somebody won in the American <laughs> League, and somebody won in the National League, and then you had the World Series. Yeah, but that was years ago. Yeah, but I mean, they've done everything they can to stretch this out, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, but it <clears throat> actually worked because in the old days, the way things were, you only had one team advance, and there was never any. If your team was out of it, you might as well stop watching in in July or August. Right now, the way they have it, you have more chance to see your team. Like the Yankees would have been out of it if it wasn't for they they made the wild card. Yeah. And they won wild card game and so you know it, it it draws more people into the game yeah by the way we've been joined by john rockwell yeah uh, yeah it, it may I, draw more you seem a little short-handed here so i thought I'd come yeah in we are a little short-handed tonight i guess i go away to vermont and people just say fuck you yeah <laughs> he's is he back yet gee i don't know <laughs> well i saw I, some of the live I, stuff he did though very nice and I've been to the Shelburne Museum. You're right; it's an amazing. Is place. Is it not an amazing place? I, Did I, you? It was one place. When I somebody really said we're there, going to the no. Shelburne Museum, and I'm going, you know, what do they have? A stuffed dog there? You know, I mean, what 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 is the no, Shelburne Museum? It is amazing. It was a couple of people who just collected. I think is what, and they, they just went. But supposedly, there's one the one thing I I accidentally went. And saw this. There was a house on the side of the road in Shelburne. It was it's a it was a fifties era um, ranch house, and yeah. it and they actually bought the house 
it was on that property. It's it, and and made it part of the Shelby Museum. And inside, it's all done up like a '50s house with or '40s like early '50s furniture and kitchen appliances and stuff. It is, you know, especially for kids who probably, you know, who well, grandparents uh, grew up in the 50s. You know, there, are, like, there is on the, wonderful. It's there, so neat. <laughs> there is on this property. Uh, yeah, there, property. there are things like there's a there's a, 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 a covered bridge that they mm -hmm. must have taken from somewhere and just plopped it right down there. The whole boat, the Ticonderoga, this giant yep. steamer. Yep, I uh, saw that. Is there. Uh, I, I went into the circus museum too. It's really nice. I, I didn't go in, but I, I want to go back next year and go to the yeah. circus museum because it it's just it it was really special, and, and there are people mm -hmm. supposedly who know about this and make sure they do a vacation in that part of the world just so they can go to the Shelburne Museum. Well, if you just staying up in Burlington area, the the food up there is amazing. As yeah. a beer as a beer geek, the 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 breweries in that area are fantastic. You know, it's like why you know a fantastic place to 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 spend a spend a week. Mm. Yeah, their senators fucked, but uh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old Sanburn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, you know, I mean, it's, I I have some friends of mine are. I uh, grew up in uh, Burlington and, and all that, and and they just they just love it up. You know, they if they could have kept jobs is, up there, they would have stayed yeah, up there. Well, this down is the, New York. It, this was explained to us that this is the kind of place, and it's very strange. This kind of place mm -hmm. that uh, kids grow up there, and when they get old enough, they don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to leave. They want to stay there. You know, mm -hmm. and the problem is they usually have to leave because the good jobs are somewhere else. Because it's you know, yeah. you know, you have to go to Boston, you have to go to New York to to mm -hmm. get the big jobs. You yeah. know, but right. something's echoing here. Ah, you know, go. but uh, hi, Tommy Amaguchi, how are you? Hi, I hope I'm not echoing. No, you're not echoing. Nope. No, not now. Yeah, well, now, all of a sudden it clears itself up like a bad mm -hmm. cold. Uh, but anyway, uh, they were, sh they were just saying that the kids grow up there and then they feel bad when they have to leave. Now, how many places have you heard about like that? You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. So they stay, the ones who stay there get jobs as, uh, you know, they may graduate from college and become a waitress, you know, just to stay in <laughs> Burlington. Get a job at Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, ben and Jerry's the, the Vermont yeah. Teddy Bear Factory is there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. You remember me <laughs> selling the Vermont Teddy Bears on the radio? Hey, if mm -hmm. I could get a job at one of those breweries up there, I'd move in a flash. <laughs> yeah. They, got some great, they make some great beer up in that, uh, northern, northern uh, uh, Vermont. Beautiful places up there. But what happened was we, we, we usually go up during, the, during uh, I don't know, June, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we went, we're going to fly up, and then all of a sudden the plane got canceled, I think you may remember. And yep. So mm -hmm. we came back here, and uh, we rescheduled for, for later in the year, and we've never been up there during the fall. So it was yeah. a diff entirely different experience for us because, number one, you see the leaves turning, although they're not that profound this year because of the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. but, oh, really? Uh, yeah. But the... Um, um, the, the the weather the wind was whipping like crazy mm. and la the last night we were there we were trying to sleep and we couldn't sleep because the whole house was being buffeted by wind <laughs> wow you know and i mean it's a tough house it, it can take it but i mean it was just i went what is that i thought like it was raining or something and the rain was pouring in or something no it was just the wind and it was just it was really noisy we well, you know what the locals uh, call the visitors that come up during the fall. They call them leaf peepers. What? <laughs> yeah, leaf, leaf people? Peep the leaf peepers are, oh. are, are, are in. Oh, leaf yeah. peepers? And, yeah. Well, you have to have that Vermont accent, too, which I can't really do well. They're leaf yeah. peepers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they sell a lot of maple candy. We know our friend, there. our old mutual friend Jim, who used to work at Blue early on, yeah. uh, grew up in, in Brattleboro. So he's a Vermonter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, that's where I get all those... Uh, those weird terms. He said, Oh yeah, we, you know, the, they, they start coming up in like, you know, September, October. And it's, you know, it's just this, the influx of the, of the leaf peepers. <laughs> well, when I was, when I was younger, uh, I had, uh, um, uh, uh, 
you know, a great deal of people who, um, uh, who held, you know, or the alternative press. And so mm -hmm. they held an alternative media conference at Goddard College. Oh, yeah, that's the place. And to this do it. was like a very hip college. It was so yeah. hip that you could actually get credits for walking through the woods. I mean, that's <laughs> that's how hip this school but was. Alex, uh, my yes. adoptive mother, Alice, went to Goddard College. Oh, really? She was trying to get, she was trying to get me there she could take a correspondence course, but uh, she took me on campus. It's very beautiful. Um, uh, the playwright David Mamet uh, was a college graduate from. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay, because yeah. the thing was that you know we we held this alternative media conference up there, and every morning for breakfast there'd be like two coolers, and one would say regular, and one would say electric, mm -hmm. and the one that was electric was LSD, and so you could drink your <laughs> orange juice and get LSD at the same time, and then be stoned mm. for the next eight hours, mm. uh, and. This was going on at Goddard College. It's like they didn't mind that this was happening like this, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, all these weird people were showing up. The hog farm was there with Wavy Gravy, you know. Mm -hmm. Who I always, I always found Wavy a little off-putting. I mean, you know. I remember <laughs> once I was doing a telethon, and he was one of the people manning the bank of phones, wearing a clown oh, face. And I was reading the teleprompter, and I was reading what it said there, and I just said, and this is the face of charity or of, of giving. <laughs> and they showed you, Romney, wavy gravy in his clown face. And I said, that's the face. <laughs> yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I find I find uh, uh, Wavy Gravy a very nice, approachable person. Oh, he's very he's he's nice. There. He's really nice. And on top of well, on have I told you, Tom? I really can't stand people who are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you put up with me. No, no, I put up with you because, uh, yeah, you're really nice. Ah, fuck you then. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I didn't completely. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I know Wavy is a nice guy. Okay, Hugh Romney is his real name. He's a really nice guy. But so what? <laughs> you know? He put up he's but you can be nice and weird stuff. at the same time. <laughs> I like people we used to go up uh, on uh, on uh, Labor Day weekends up to the hog farm up in Lake Lakeville and he would do these weekend uh, concerts that were just terrific. Yeah. Just terrific the whole weekend and and one one weekend show Mm -hmm. They had um, uh, Los Lobos. Uh, actually, it was the first. Actually, mm -hmm. before Los Lobos came on, they had uh, Hank Sauer to the midnight. 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 Um, yeah, it's funny you should mention him because today I'm listening to my uh, my uh, uh, iPhone, and uh, what comes on but Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Yeah, uh, and it was so much. It was fun because you know it was, it, it was like they had the vendors, you know, with the you know the hippie you know paraphernalia that they were selling along the side of the cage, and so so Hank Bauer and the Midnighters came on. They did their set, and they were setting up for Los Lobos, and uh, the guys with their wives, you know, and these guys with their seventies, you know, and maybe eighties, I know. But they were walking hand in hand with their wives. They still had their, their costumes on there, these beautiful red blazers. Just walking around the crowds, looking at the vendors and smiling and it was just a really it was a really nice event. I really enjoyed it. You having some troubles tonight, Mike? No. Huh? Uh uh. What? No. Uh uh. Oh, well, you're kind of gr making a lot of noises there. I kind of didn't. Got a cold. They didn't sound like you have a cold or something. No, I just woke up. Oh. <laughs> oh, you just woke up. It's funny because yeah. I'm about to go to sleep. So, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. um, you know what I love about Tom? If you ever. Now, Tom, you see his Facebook page, I love. I love it because every now and then I get a posting from it. It's always about somebody who died. Yeah. You are like the Grim Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a living obituary column. <laughs> and sometimes they're, very, they're people you never heard of, but you know their little specific place in history. 
and you make a big deal out of it. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, I actually uh, this past summer I actually saw a great documentary called Obit. Yeah, it, it's about the obituary um, uh, writers for the New York Times. Yeah. And uh, I recommend it. It's really, really good, especially the guy who works the um, the, the what they call the morgue, uh, they, where they have all the files of all the people that accumulate, so they're waiting for them to die, so they can pull them out and well, use that. If to, I'm not mistaken, it. they have obituaries already pre-written, and Absolutely. they keep and then they keep add, point, yeah. they keep adding to them. That's right. Uh, as as time goes on. Uh, yeah. And then when the person dies, they publish it. Um, yeah. We had a little thing like that at radio stations. Did you ever, maybe you didn't have this, uh, Rob, but at several radio stations where I worked, there was a tape up on the wall, and it said, in event of the president's death. Mm. And, it, and, it uh, was, and it was a reel-to-reel -reel tape you would throw on. That was like on Avani music? or No, it was literally the story of his life. Oh no no no! I ne we had uh, and a tribute emergency tapes that would play like this was early on. This was not like later. This was like my first couple of jobs, where it was because music that we didn't play. It was you know I don't know if they would do it today. Mm -hmm. In the day, it was seemed like um, it wouldn't be right to do your format if you were rock and roll or whatever. So they would play you know like Monavani records or whatever. Now, they did that WABC in New York, didn't play top 40 for a while. They, they you know, did news coverage and played, like, some strange, you know, music. But I, I don't think that way. I think people have changed so much today that it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, today, if, if, let's say, Prince dies and you're a rock station, you simply punch into the computer, Prince... Oh, and yeah. then you just play everything, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But in those days, I mean, if a president died, what do you do? Well, you know, you put the thing on, you know. And so the, there was always a tape on the wall. I remember that. At most of the stations I worked at, whether it was WMCA or whatever, that you played in in event of the death of the president. Interesting. You know, so. The day you would join CNN or whatever. You know, everybody's got an affiliation. Well, you know, to begin with, if, if, uh, for instance, let's say Trump died. Well, well that's different. Oh, God, what a dream. <laughs> anyway, um, let's Who say. the gang celebrate. Let's say Trump on died. <laughs> on a continuous loop till the funeral. Right. I'm wondering if the news operations would go into that mode of being, you know, like they did with Kennedy or they did with anybody uh, uh, who was a president. Of, of lionizing them and saying wonderful things and so on. I just don't know what wonderful things you could say about Donald Trump. I don't know how sad. you could do tributes to him. If it anything, would you would be playing jazz music, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Mm. You know, I'd be playing these are people who died, died. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 we, I don't completely under. Yeah, yes, uh, Jeff. We have a, a family um, uh, competition about when Trump is going to either lose his job, retires, or as I say, hopefully he'll have a good heart attack. <laughs> And go back to the hospital and stay there. And by the way, that would be the only case of a good heart attack. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, I uh, and and what and what is your prediction? Well, unfortunately, mine was was on my birthday, and I, I passed, so I, I didn't win because everybody has a date and all that kind of stuff that they yeah. selected, and unfortunately, he keeps surviving well you know i mean he's done so much this year to get himself tossed out i mean he doesn't even have the republicans on his side anymore so if anybody wants to impeach him they're just going to sit back and just you know it's like i've talked about with a guy like harvey weinstein okay yes if harvey was a really nice guy right 
Also, if he wasn't fat and ugly, he probably wouldn't have had the problems that he had, even if he had the same behavior. Because there were people that be, would be out there to protect him. It was kind of like, uh, what's his name, uh, the uh, the uh, congressman from New York. Uh, oh, Anthony, Anthony Weiner. Anthony Weiner. If he were just a nicer guy in Washington, there would be a lot of people coming to his defense. You know, and, and, and putting out a helping hand. And I think in the case of... Um, of, of Trump, I think if he suddenly gets into some kind of real problem that's impeachable, they're all just going to sit there with their arms folded. Nobody's going to come to save him. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's yeah. going to care about saving him. So, uh, uh, you know, he's he hasn't been very smart. He hasn't courted anybody, you know. And today, the latest thing that really bothers me is how much does this guy hate Obama? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Today, his latest thing is Obama never called the parents of dead soldiers. When in fact, he was known for calling every one of them. He was is also... I he called every one of them. Uh, remember, I guess the, the, the thing was that uh, supposedly he didn't talk call Kelly when, when Kelly's son died. And that's why I supposedly Kelly shared with Trump. And so that he extrapolated that he didn't call anybody. Would, would you, you really know? believe that Donald Trump calls every parent of every person that was killed? No, he said he doesn't. He said he does a mixture of phone calls and letters. Yeah, but do you even think he sends out letters all the time? I mean, do you think he's and really... Calls on that case here's the thing they showed a, a video of obama the night that 44 people came back who were killed in some kind of action i can't remember what the action was now and he and biden went out to the airport and saluted the caskets as they went by uh i'm yep. sorry donald don't you remember that you know mm -hmm. Uh, that was more than you've ever done. Did you hear his comments about how he brought ISIS down? Who brought ISIS down? He did. Oh, he did? Oh. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 something about, you know, that ISIS has fallen. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed him and, and he said, and, and his answer was, we'll be, they, I forgot what the question was, but the answer was, that's because you didn't have Trump as president before. And, and uh, I mean, he went on to say that I did this, and I, I mean, I wish I heard it in the car as I was pulling up to the house here. Yeah, I, I was paying closer attention, but it's got to be on, it's got to be out there on the internet somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I. There's no we. There's no you know the the team. Us. You know, it's us. Yeah. Right. It's just I, I, I. I, I and I. he said it straight out because you didn't have Trump as president before. Wow, it's wow. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. No, I believe it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I believe it too, but it's <laughs> unbelievable that that's where we are. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I find it, I find it very off-putting, to say the very least. And and the fact that the guy, um, uh, you know, is taking credit for stuff that he didn't even do. Well, of course, CNN right away said, "Well, if you really, if you look at this." You could really say his since he's taken over as president, you could you could really say that this really was Obama's uh, credit because the uh, the the tack that they've taken since 2015 under Obama is the tack that continued. So it was it was uh, it was driven it was uh, uh, you know thought up by Obama's administration and just carried through. So it ended now, and supposedly uh, they're toppled. But it's it's no no brilliance that he did. It's just him carrying through on what Obama's administration did prior. Well, I mean, he's taking he's taking credit for the stock market reaching an all time high. I think it hit twenty three thousand today mm -hmm. or something. Yep. Yeah, uh, just barely. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's taking credit for that. There's no credit to be taken for that. He hasn't done anything that has propelled the uh, the uh, economy. It's just that there is a robust in, a robust feeling in the economy. Period. That's it. Yeah. He was also uh, 
reported as he is not one of the what what they call it the the most uh, financially successful guys uh, uh, in the world, mm-hmm. and he's running down on that group, so he's not as rich as he was, and apparently a lot of it is because of the. The property in New York is, is going down in value, really, uh, because uh, people are buying things on the internet now instead of buying all these uh, fancy stuff in Manhattan, right on his property, which he used to rent. Mm-hmm. So. Hot, boy, now he'll rent it to the government. What? Now he'll just rent it to the government. So now he'll, he'll just rent it to the government. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's. He, he, you do know that the uh, the Secret Service had to move out of Trump Tower because they couldn't afford the rent he was charging mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's un- oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, so, yes, uh, John. Well, supposedly, I, before I watching a little bit of MSNBC, probably about 8, 9 o'clock, and whoever was on there was saying, you know, I don't know, they were saying they didn't really think that ISIS was particularly down since they're now actively recruiting people to uh, people to be trained in the Congo. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in the Congo that ISIS needs to have something to do, but it's just, well, you know, they might not have certain locations in, in, in Iraq or Syria, but that doesn't mean they're gone. <laughs> it just, they just move, they just move operations to another, to another country. You know, yeah. and they're allowed to ISIS, or related well, groups that are still you, blasting away. You know, an organization like ISIS only can last for so long. There's a there's a uh, uh, there's an expiration date on all those groups. Yeah. I mean, there I'm was sure. on Al Qaeda, and now there is on ISIS, and now there'll be some other group that will come along. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I guess the only way we're going to stop it is if we start listening to the needs of the people in those areas. You know, and quit trying to tell them what to do. Mm. You know, we're going to bring you democracy. Yeah, well, when are we mm. going to get it here? You know? I, yes, yeah. yes, Tom. Actually, on that note, um, speaking of telling other countries what to do, did you finally uh, watch the rest of that uh, Vietnam War series? No. Oh, I would recommend it. I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, but I lived very... it. I lived it. I, you know, I lived every moment of it. No, no, you didn't. There's a lot of this that actually one of the mo- most interesting things about this was the interviews with people uh, in Vietnam, both uh, in the uh, uh, the South and mm-hmm. also with the Viet Cong and North and North Vietnamese. Uh, very, very interesting stories from their perspective i think it's that alone is worth worth uh you know worth worth checking out yeah it's just yeah. Uh, you got to slog through how many hours of that thing i but, find it very 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 entertaining and you know and me i love really I, I love documentaries i eat them like uh, tortilla chips you know <laughs> uh but unfortunately i that somehow it just didn't grab me because I, I said to myself, I so intimately lived it, you know, with, with friends of mine going off to war. And I mean, I was very lucky because the Bay of Tonkin incident took place in the last year. Well, I spent two years yeah. in the Navy and it, it happened in like the last six months of my tour of duty. So uh, technically, I'm a Vietnam War vet. Technically. Uh, I don't say it because I don't want to do, dishonor those people who are truly Vietnam vets who had to go over there and become cannon fodder for the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did, you know, I wasn't uh, uh, certainly wasn't, uh, uh, you know, was, was there at that point. In fact, when I got mustered out, I ta- told this before. I got mustered out with people who were on the USS Maddox and the C. Turner Joy, which were the two boats out in the Gulf of Tonkin, who told me nothing went on out there. Mm-hmm. You know, they just fired some uh, uh, some cannons or whatever into, into nothingness, and they were never mm-hmm. fired upon, and they came back to shore, and they got a bunch of medals. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know for what, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. I... 
you know, that that's so I, and then I started to know people who were drafted. I know knew people who had to leave the country because they didn't want to get drafted, and I remember it as uh, a time when we were fighting for the lives of of people who were close to our own ages. I happened to be a little older than them. So, and I had also served, so I wasn't going to get, I wasn't going to get drafted. But, mm -hmm. you know, I worried about all my friends, I'll tell you that. And uh, some of them had to leave the country because they didn't want to serve. And I don't blame them. That was a hellish war. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, um, the only thing I could think that's close to it was World War II, World War I was kind of a hellish war as well. Mm -hmm. The uh, trench warfare and, and gas and it, uh, poison, and, mustard yeah, gas. Yeah, and it was oh. all, it was all, how can I put it? It was a very uh, archaic, the whole way it was fought with, with mustard gas and things like that, you know. And they still had horses, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, uh, you know, but, but uh, Vietnam was, it was a big mistake. That was for damn sure. Yeah. Well, it comes down to two words, and that's ignorance and arrogance. You know, uh, we we were ignorant of, of what that uh, country was or its history or its people, its culture, completely ignorant. And we we're ag arrogant into thinking that we knew what was best for them. And uh, it just keeps playing out. It's playing out today. Yeah. You know. Well, we also, we expected that uh, since the French, French people ran the country for a while and they sh couldn't manage it, yeah. we thought, well, we can handle it. If they, if they can't, it would be easy for us. Mm -hmm. Now, my favorite... The French story, were very smart. My favorite, my favorite story of the weekend was uh, we were up, uh, up there and we... We went out to dinner. We didn't get to see 60 Minutes, but if you go to CBS News app, you mm -hmm. can watch it anyway. The segments are all there for you to watch. And they did this report on opiates in America. And where the and, and it was done with the uh, Washington Post. And mm -hmm. it was about basically about the opium uh, opiate epidemic and how it exists. And that these pharmaceutical companies are making a fortune over, over off the opiate, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, problem that we have in this country, <clears throat> and that they have been getting laws passed to prevent them from being called to account for it. And mm -hmm. the most recent was this uh, guy, uh, uh, Congressman Tom Marino, and one other, mm -hmm. and a woman I can't remember her name now, were. Uh, uh, passed this law in in congress that the dea couldn't go after these drug companies and these drug uh distributors mm -hmm. and so literally they handcuffed the dea and by mm -hmm. doing so they allowed for millions of doses of this stuff to start making it into the general population and the dea could do nothing to fight it now the end of the story is, and they make a big deal out of it, that um, uh, Tom Marino uh, was nominated as the new drug czar by Donald Trump. Yeah. And this yeah, is the very that. guy who fueled the opioid epidemic in this country. And today, uh, because of that whole report and all the stuff that came off of it, uh, Marino withdrew his... Uh, Oh, he nomination. did. I was wondering yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, it gives new it gives a new new meaning to the term drug czar, sort of like uh, <laughs> you know, more like a Colombian drug czar, I think. Well, the know? other thing that's kind of interesting, and what I like to see is that a news organization, for once, made something happen. Mm -hmm. You know, not not just sitting or sitting around belly aching about it all day long, like they do on MSNBC or where or CNN, but literally going and getting the goods on somebody, and then making an effective change in the way this government is run. And I I, I think that's what made it especially good. Um, hello to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Are you there? Hey, Alex, can you hear I, me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I might have to call back. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
but but it was it was it was I was so happy, you know, to see um, uh, see that sixty minutes actually got the goods on this guy. I mean, and it was the the tag at the very end of the whole story. It was like two whole segments on how horrible this opioid epidemic is, and how the DEA can't do anything about it, and so on. <clears throat> about this law that got passed by this Tom Marino and this uh, and this other woman. And then at the very end, the the thing that just hits you in the gut is when they say, "And he's been nominated to be drug czar by Donald Trump," <laughs> and you go. Doesn't All that have to say. doesn't that go to figure? You know, well, what is it about? What is it about <clears throat> Trump, the people that he brings in to these various departments are the people that are the exact opposite of what those departments are supposed to be doing? I mean, almost <laughs> everyone they bring in well, you, the head of the is, EPA hates you know, the EPA. Like the environmental guy yeah, thinks yeah. that global warming is a hoax. The you know, I mean, you know, the what's her name? The 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 education the woman who you know. Uh, I mean, everybody is just the opposite of what you would sort of expect that that agency or that that department should be doing. Yeah, it's just so, like they're actually actively looking for people to take all these things and take them yeah, apart because he's there to blow it all up. Yeah, of course. You know, that's yeah, Change but uh, status quo. Right. Yeah. You know, if there's anything that worked while Obama was president, you know, and then it's got to be, you know, it's got to be shut down now. You know, can't have anything, anything that, 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 that was done well, you know. <laughs> Except Obamacare. They can't seem to do that. Well, no. Well, you yeah, know, that's a, that hits a lot of people awfully that's close a, to it, home, even in the in the red states. So, you know. The funny thing is he just uh, ended those subsidies for Obamacare. And then he sanctions this deal, which keeps them around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Refunds them. So he's all over the place. Yeah, just wants I to think it's short term done. memory. I think there's a short term <laughs> memory loss thing here. He just you know, wants something, to get you something know, done. It doesn't matter what it is, really. That's the feeling you get with a guy like that. He's just mm -hmm. looking to have a win. And the win could be anything as long as he could say, We did this. Or, mm -hmm. I did this. I, I did I, this. Right. There's no we, I, no, right. There is no we in Trump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, somehow there's an I in Trump, but we don't know where. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Unbelievable. It just, yeah. ah. Well, I mean, all, all I'm saying is, is that uh, it just seems ridiculous, you mm -hmm. know, that he would make as a drug czar. Oh, we just lost Kevin. I guess he's going to try back. Again. He's, yeah. Yeah. There we, you have, go. we have very low numbers tonight, by the way, on the video, because I'm not putting it on the Facebook page any longer. And somebody wrote, oh, it's a shame. Now I won't be able to watch it anymore. And right at the very top, I said, just go over to Facebook Live and you can see it live. And you're not doing it on Facebook. Why? Because I'm just tired of Facebook. I don't like the trolls, and I don't but like the, you, I don't like. Minute, you huh? are on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you on, on the phone. But it's not the it's not Alex's. You know, uh, you're it's a Gabnet you, Live. You're on Gabnet Live. Facebook, yeah, Facebook it's still Live, Facebook. It's, well, yes, but, but it's not uh, but, on the Bennett page. And it's a different kind of thing too. I mean, yeah. people can't. That's why I watch it on. People can't really be trolls, and you know, so on. And 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 later on, they can watch it on Gabnet.net. You know, so it's there. Uh, you know, I may go back to the Facebook page, but not for now. I just got so disillusioned with it. This weekend, I'm on vacation, and somebody messages me and says something where he doesn't even know what he's talking about. You know, why is there no show? Uh, why is tonight's uh, intersection not up on, uh, you know, on, on the on demand or whatever? And I had to write him and say, I'm on fucking vacation. Leave me alone. <laughs> Ask Jack. You know, do I have the don't I have the right to, you know, go on vacation for crying out loud? And that was kind of the last straw for me and what was a lot of things that have just gone on constantly with uh, with uh, uh, with Facebook. You know, anytime you say something even nice, they want to climb down your ass on it, you know? So I just finally, I just decided to hell with it. Hello there, Kevin. Now we can see you. Now we see him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, I, I, and I finally just said, you know, uh, 
And also, I'm, I was getting a little tired of losing these followers for some reason, and I was getting tired of the fact that the numbers weren't that high anyway. I mean, right now, they're not high at all. Mm. But, you know, they're certainly not, uh, you know, not that much less than we were getting before. But, you know, then there's always an idiot like the one who wrote after I, he's answering in the column where I said where you go to hear it. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I won't be able to hear it anymore, watch it anymore. <laughs> so you what do you moron, do? <laughs> you fucking moron. That's what I'm talking about with Facebook people. Mm. It look, it's looking great talking? to where it is now. Just keep it where it is now. Yeah. Well, it, it. We've been joined by Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? I'm uh, in Marin County at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to hear the first part of the show. All I heard was the part about the fucking moron. I figured they were talking about Trump or Tillerson. <laughs> Neither. Neither. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, how how was uh, Alex in uh, in Vermont? It was a, very nice. If you had listened to the show, you could have heard me talk about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, I understand. I was uh, out at dinner, and uh, it was, I meant to get done earlier. So, oh. uh, okay, I'll listen to the rerun of the show. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. If if yeah, there will. Be, well, I guess you can listen to the rerun. Yeah. Yeah, that will be up well, later. Uh, as will the. I, I didn't want you to. I didn't want you to think I abandoned you, but uh, so I called without listening. Oh. What is the topic? Uh, let me see. What is the topic, people? There have been a few. <laughs> We've been all over the place. It all comes back to Trump and all the idiotic things he's been doing. Wow. Well, yeah. well uh, I I thought about a few things that. If he goes to war, uh, will pro uh, the stock market will probably go to thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and um, you, you know, know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I I get a little tired of this. The stock market doesn't mean shit to a tree. Mm -hmm. You know. No, I understand. Because it, it makes people feel. Uh, it, it, it gives people a, a, a feeling that they are wealthier than they really are or that things are better than they really are. Well, wasn't the stock, uh, just before the stock market crash in uh, 29, uh, and, yeah. and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, I think the stock market was going crazy. It was high. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, the same yeah. thing happened in 2000. And uh, when was the last time it crashed? 2008? Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, people get a feeling of euphoria. Whether they're invested in the stock market or not, they, uh, they associate those types of things uh, with a good economy. Yeah, and it makes people it. spend money. Ah. People don't have money to spend? You know, so? No. Well, no, no, they spend credit. You know, the last time there was easy credit. And so there's, there's or they spending their, whatever equity they had in their homes. Maybe they were spending those Bush uh, tax refund checks, those $200 checks or whatever. Well, were. you know, I have money. I have, I, I have money in Vanguard. And my business manager, yeah. who I trust and I like a lot, wrote me a note a while back saying, I know you, you're probably happy with the way your Vanguard is going right now, but that ain't going to last forever. But at this rate, it looks like it is. I mean, I, uh, hell, I mean, a couple of years ago, I think I only had like $12,000 in it, and now it's up towards uh, twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand. 27000 I mean, it's well, just gone sky you might, high. You better pray for a nuclear holocaust with uh, North Korea if you want it to continue to climb. Well, I pr I pray for a nuclear holocaust with North Korea, if the North Koreans will have as only one target, the White House. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure they're aiming at it, but I don't know if the uh, missile will go that far. It'll probably land in San Francisco with my luck. Well, you know, uh, uh, Kim Jong Un said this weekend that he won't be willing to sit down for peace talks until he has a missile that can wind up on the east coast of the United States. 
yeah. meaning that I think he he wants the negotiating power, and believe it or not, oh, of course he does. yeah, but yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't count on that Kim Jong Un because look at how Trump keeps his uh, keeps the promises of the United States when it comes to nuclear treaties. Yeah. Well, you know, when Trump was first elected, uh, they said if Trump was elected, that the stock market would crash and that the, the uh, I never, Armageddon. I, I never heard that. I never heard that it was going to crash. You know. Well, they, they, they said the stock market would go down if Trump was elected. And, you know, in the past, they, uh, Repu- uh, the, the pundits, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the people Maybe. like uh, uh, the guy who says "boya" all the time. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the financial Kramer. guy. Kramer. Kramer. Yeah. Kramer. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, what? Uh, he lives what next door to Seinfeld. Thought, what? You know the the, the the other thing is oh, I'm just coming up on San Quentin. Uh, the other thing is when uh, Republican presidents get elected, the stock market usually goes down. And uh, and this is one of the few times that it went up. Yeah. So what does that prove? It doesn't prove Trump had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, but if uh, I mean, you know, if, they, if Trump gives us a good war, you know, maybe we'll. Uh... Well, I don't know. You know, uh, yes, in times of war, stock markets have gone up, but. That doesn't necessarily have to be true every time. You know, the next time it could be it would go down. Yeah. Especially because we can't well, af- pay for one. Especially because we can't pay yeah. for one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there was a guy I went to school with. His name was Larry Lindsay. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, Bush's senior economic advisor and uh, had to uh, resign. He and O'Neill, who was the... Uh, uh, Secretary of the Treasury, I think. Uh, they both resigned because Larry Lindsay found that the estimates that they had for the war in Iraq were much lower than what Larry Lindsay had uh, calculated. And when he brought this to Bush's attention, uh, both he and O'Neill got to resign. Hmm. Sounds familiar. I, I, yeah. So, yeah, and uh, Larry's estimate was that it was going to be three times the expense uh, that the Bush administration had said that it would be. And uh, it turned out, I guess, it was a little bit more than that. Yeah. Uh, Now, uh, by the way, I get another idiot here. This guy, Frank Stapoli, I think is his name, who says it keeps freezing uh, Facebook. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, and and he he says he says he says go back to Facebook. Hey, you moron! We are on Facebook, just not the Alex Bennett page on Facebook. We're on GabNet Live. Okay, so it's yeah. the same fucked up system it's always been, Stripoli, and it's probably your machine. <laughs> Because mine freezes here, well, but the my <clears throat> Marjorie's doesn't. So you know, go figure. Yeah, uh, he's one of your loyal listeners. He well, really is. well, he is also a troll. Okay, he's one of the reasons I'm not putting it on Facebook any longer. Really? On, my, on my Facebook page any longer. Yeah, it's the reason I'm not posting anything to my Facebook well, page. You guys can use that as a blackboard for all your stupid meanderings, okay? Uh, you know, you want to you want to come up with a separate page, which is uh, Facebook, uh, and uh, let them post there. And what do you mean? Wait, wait a minute. Facebook Live is a separate page. Yeah. Fa- the Gabnet Live is a separate page. Yeah. You just go to facebook.com forward slash gabnet live. All right? Mm-hmm. And just watch it there. And, you know, if it's freezing there, it would freeze over at the other one, too. It's the same system. Now, if I went to yeah. YouTube, I think we'd have less problems, but we'd have less people. Yeah. I'm not having any problems. So I has. You know, everything's, it's, the picture's looking great. The video's been solid, right? It hasn't been here, yeah. but it never is here on this machine for some reason, you know? Hey, 
I'm on your favorite bridge. What's the name of this bridge? San Rafael Bridge? Uh, it's, 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 I think it's, the a, it's John a Senator F. John McCarthy yeah, John, Bridge. Yeah, John F. McCarthy Bridge. Very good, Tom. Okay. I am on the John McCarthy but, Bridge. But wait a minute. That, that's only in one direction. In the other direction, it's the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. Are you sure? I think yeah, no, I don't think well, I don't think sign, I don't think it has, I think the whole I don't think it ha bridge. I don't think it has the same name in both directions. I think as you're going on it on one direction, it says the McCarthy <laughs> Bridge, and on the other way, it just says Richmond San Rafael Bridge or something. Well, there well, there aren't like any signs for the lower portion. <laughs> yeah, what were you saying, Tom? So, I was saying it, 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 it's not two bridges. It's it's just one bridge, and you know. Yeah. Uh, so so it's got to be the whole bridge. I guess. Yeah, and by the way, uh, the it's the you know the, the uh, San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm. It's just the western span that's named after Willie Brown. The one the, the span that's between uh, San Francisco and uh, Yerba Buena Island. That's the span that's that's uh, named after Willie Brown. Why? What did he ever right. fucking do for San Francisco? Except uh, yeah. he was the mayor. He was, he was the mayor. He's also a fucking crook. Yeah. Actually, there was a movement to name it after Emperor Norton. Uh, and yeah. the guy, this guy is still trying to do it. He's, you know, and it makes sense to name it after Emperor Norton because... Well, ex explain who Emperor Norton is because we have listeners that don't know what oh, we're talking right. about. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Emperor Norton is one of the classic uh, San Francisco characters. He... Uh, uh, lived about, oh, I say, well, you know, in the, the uh, gold rush days or post, you know, the mid to yeah, the late 1850s. century. Yeah. And uh, he one day he, he decided he was uh, emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. And uh, he started uh, create, printing his own money, and uh, <laughs> people were accepting his money as, as legal tender. Except one time he took a train ride and the conductor refused his money and he got irate and he wrote to the president of the railroad and the president of the railroad wrote back and apologized and said he could ride the train free for the rest of his life. <laughs> and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the proclamations that Emperor Norton gave was to, to build a bridge from San Francisco to what was then called Goat Island. It's now called Yerba Buena Island. And so uh, the people who, uh, actually it's one guy, I think his name is Lumia. Uh, he, uh, he said, hey, you know, uh, Emperor Norton, he's ahead of his time. And now we have this bridge. We need to name it after him. But, you know, politicians, they never listen. Yeah, well, Emperor Norton, I, used, I remember in San Francisco, the San Francisco Chronicle every year used to have Emperor Norton Day and stuff like that. And they would give out yeah. coins. They would give out coins with uh, Emperor Norton's face on them. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, as, far, as far as I'm concerned now, the Bay Bridge is now the Emperor Norton Bridge. Yeah. And I will never call it the Bay Bridge. Right. That's it. Start a movement. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And of course, you I, I like what, that story. Yeah. And of course, you remember what uh, Bob Rubin renamed the Golden Gate Bridge. What? Willie the Penis Man. Uh, Willie the Penis Man? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. What does that relate to? That's yeah. it, well, uh, it's just that uh, Bob Rubin came on the show one morning and said, uh, "Yeah, well, I, I, I'm going to rename the Gold Gate Bridge Willie the Penis Man. For now on, call it Willie the Penis Man." Well, the Gold. Uh, you see, here's the thing: the Bay, the Bay Bridge is a functional bridge, right? Yeah. But the Golden Gate Bridge is a work of art. Yeah. And and so it never. It's always been its bastard brother. You know. Alex, have you traveled over the New Bay Bridge? No. Uh, Emperor Norton Bridge, excuse me. No, no I have no. not. Actually, uh, actually, the the uh, the Eastern Span, I don't think has a name. Although the bicycle path, the bicycle pedestrian path, does have a name. And you know yeah. who it's named after? Uh, no. uh, I, I, I hope. I hope it. I hope it isn't Alex. the. What? His first name's Alex. His last name's Alex Zuckerman. Why is it named after Alex, Alex Zuckerman? 
Alex Zuckerman is the one of the founders of the East Bay Bicycle Coalition, which lobbied to get a uh, bike lane over the of the bridge when it was built. So they named the I bridge. I thought it was because, but Tom, I thought it was because they couldn't spell Schwarzman. <laughs> Well, you see, I'd make, I'd make joy, jokes right now about bike lanes, but it, it, whether you know it or not, our dear friend here, Tom Yamaguchi, is, uh, is a bike lane guy. Yep. So That's true. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you're still getting a good signal from us with the picture and everything? Tom? Yeah. You're still getting yeah. the picture and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything's great on my end. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the Facebook Live uh, uh, through uh, my my iPhone. Yeah, and it looks, looks good. Good. Yeah. It looks real good. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, it has no diff. There's no difference between doing it on that Facebook page and on this Facebook page, except the configuration of this Facebook page means a lot less trolling can go okay. on. You know, people can write stuff, but it's always over to the side and nobody pays attention to it, you know, okay. uh, and they can they can, you know. But somebody said to me, you know, you really could go back to your old page and I might do that. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, when I set this thing up saying where I want it to be. Uh, and they said, you can you can tell Facebook not to allow people to comment. You know. Mm -hmm. which, uh, which I might I might end because again there's stupid stuff that just bothers me like when somebody wrote and said well gee I'm sorry I can't see the video anymore right under a description of where you go to watch the video <laughs> you know all you have to do is go to the very top where it says Abe Bennett change it to Gabnet Live and then hit uh, return and it'll you go right to the page and, in fact in fact in fact, in the description, I give the link, and all you have to do is click on that link. Yeah. But no, I'm just too bad I can't watch your video anymore. Okay, you moron. I don't want you to watch the video <laughs> guess, anymore. Guess you lose out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, oh, it's, well, and then the other guy writing me saying, you know, it was much better when it was on Facebook. It is on Facebook, you idiot. <laughs> so you're having a good day. Well, oh, yeah. I just decided I was not going to run the video on my Facebook page anymore. So, yeah, you know, you know what the hell? So, uh, yes, they uh, cost too much, huh? Are they charging too much if you put it on your Facebook page as well as the Gabnet? N no, I'm not putting it on my Facebook page. I'm putting it on the Gabnet Live page. You know, and, and if they if they really want to watch it, they can watch it later on on gabnet.net. You know, it's there every yeah. day. Every day I put up the video. So, you know. Uh, and if you're having trouble watching the video right now, you wait about another 15 minutes or so, and uh, or maybe another half an hour or so, and you'll be able to just watch it without any stuttering or stopping and starting. Unless it's yeah. your machine. Well. But this is what I'm talking about. You know, I've just gotten completely frustrated with the whole process. Do you know what I'm talking about, Rob? Because you're not a big Facebook fan. No, I don't care for it much. Yeah? I have no, I'm, I don't suffer that kind of stuff well. I just stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, people are getting overloaded on this Facebook stuff. I yeah, saw yeah. someone uh, so. post today, and they said that, uh, that someone had hacked messenger account and so i said wouldn't it you know i said instead of using messenger maybe you should just call them on the phone and take them out for coffee and have a warm conversation <laughs> it got a lot of likes yeah yeah instead yeah. of watching not, me not hard to hack <laughs> and instead of watching me on yeah, video exactly. call me up and take me out to lunch you know right yeah which well, i still have to do with show. alex <laughs> What? Yeah, let them call the show. Yeah, I mean, all you people out there complain and whatever. You never call the show, and it's it's easy enough. I mean, hell. And, and it doesn't lock up on on uh, on Skype. That's correct. If Skype's working, but you know, earlier today I was telling everybody Skype was out yeah. all over the world. 
Mm. Oh, really? Oh, wow. It was down for about maybe five hours, six hours. Oh. Oh. Huh. huh. Well, you know, and there's no that time that I'm on Skype and, and it was freezing. Uh, it seems as though that other people are having that problem, too, when they upgraded to the Sierra or High Sierra. Yeah. That, mm. uh, that, that, that the screen freezes and then they have to move the cursor to unfreeze it. And uh, I haven't figured out what the fix is, but uh, I think the fix is going to be getting new, get a new computer <laughs> or, or call Apple and ask them for help. Well, I mean, if there's a problem with, what, what, did you say with Skype was your problem? Skype, yeah, what was happening was uh, when I'd be Skyping into the show, uh, with every 30 seconds or so, my screen would freeze. And, uh, and it wasn't that you saw me freeze. It wasn't my camera. It, and when I look at it in the replay, it's not frozen. But I would have to move my uh, cursor or, or mouse uh, right. in order to, uh, un, uh, to get it to start moving again. Yeah. Hmm. And it seems as though other people with Sierra and High Sierra are experiencing that. Really? Well, I'm not experiencing that tonight. I'm not fine. Tonight. Nope. Everything's just uh, fine tonight. I think I think it's my I think it's my computer. Hmm. Probably. Uh, I'm I'm still running Yosemite, which is a lower OS, but. Because of the audio program I'm using, which doesn't work very well on High yeah. Sierra, so mm -hmm. um, it seems fine. Though I've a couple, you know, I get the occasional stutter uh, in 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 sound on Skype, but that's it, and it goes away pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, I you know, know, nobody said it was. You know, you remember a few years ago, you you had to exchange floppy disks in order to make a program run. Took one mm -hmm. five and a quarter inch disc and you plugged it in. You mm -hmm. took it out and you plugged in another one so you could put the data on it. Now we're we're really spoiled. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's funny, but uh, Jack Bishop was calling me on the phone. Well, doesn't he know I'm doing a show right now? <laughs> maybe his Skype is out. Huh? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, maybe his system is out. I don't know. Uh oh. You know. Uh, but uh, it says Irv Jackson well, missed call. Hmm. Uh, that was the. Uh, you know we have more Skype. wildfires now. Oh yeah, you've been uh, driving uh, right through that. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I've been I have south been. of it, but Santa Cruz is uh, is burning. Uh, uh, mm. um, right near Santa Cruz, it's called. Uh, uh, oh, Bear, Bear Creek. Creek. Bear, Bear Creek. Creek. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, we're uh, getting it's a beautiful area. We're getting a lot of smoke down here. Mm -hmm. I yeah, would imagine you're pretty close to that. My nephew, my nephew lives in Oakland. Is you know, with the two little kids, he's worried because the smoke just comes down, oh. and so they're indoors a lot just for that. Uh, right. My one question, my one question, I actually put up on Facebook on that whole thing is how soon? I don't think it's happened yet that the Pat Robertsons of the world will start saying that these that all these fires are God's punishment for the evils, sinful things that can that Californians do with their lives. They yeah. probably already have. They always yeah. Uh, you, you yeah know, I'm, by the I'm way for that. Yeah, sure. By the way, Sarah Silverman has <laughs> has a show on Hulu now. Hmm. Uh, uh, and it's kind of a, a, a combination of talk show, comedy show, whatever. And she had as her guest on the first show the daughter of the Reverend, what's his name, the guy out in Topeka, Kansas, you know, oh, God, God Hates Fags. Yeah, Fred Phelps. Phelps, Phelps. yeah, he had his daughter on. And oh, she, in the last couple of years, has had a come-to-Jesus moment and decided that everything she'd been doing was terrible. And she's oh, been yeah, disowned by her father. And now she's spending her whole time trying to make up for her misdeeds of the past. It's very, very mm. interesting. If you get to see it, it's on Hulu. It's a very interesting interview. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to watch it. Because I uh, remember the first time uh, I, I ever... He's interviewing with Sarah Silverman, huh? That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> well, I met up uh, years ago with 
with Phelps in Topeka when I went back there for a Christmas party for a company called New Tech that was out there at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, um, uh, you would drive down the street and there there was Fred Phelps's people with their signs, you know, God hates fags, uh, which I thought, you know, I mean, at least you know where you stand with a guy holding a sign (laughs) saying God (laughs) hates fags, you know? Alan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I used to say about Fred, Fred Phelps. You know, with, with with enemies like this, who needs friends? Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> By the way, I was just looking at our um, our picture on. It keeps freezing up on me on Chrome, but on Safari, it's solid as a rock. So I think it depends on the browsers too. Could be, you know. Well, I, I'm using Safari when I'm on Skype. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, that's I'm still getting I'm freezing up, but it's it that has nothing to do. It doesn't freeze up for you. It only freezes up for me. No, what I'm saying is it doesn't it doesn't freeze up our picture. I mean, we're going through really smooth, you know. So I don't well, understand it. I don't get it. You know, makes no sense to me. But that's that's the way that's the way of the world, you know. And it's Fred Phelps punishing you. Oh, and if I was on if I was on my old Facebook page, same problem tonight. You know, on I think it's Chrome. I think Chrome is fraught with problems. You know, I think one of the worst companies in America is Google. Uh, you know, and and it's terrible. They're, they're evil. Huh? They're evil. They're, they they are they are the ones that are finding out all the information, logging this. I remember years ago, uh, there was some sort of like evil company that was uh, garnering all the information and then using it against the public. And uh, now all of a sudden we have Google uh, that is taking the same position. And our government. It was our government that allowed that uh, our the Trump government that allowed these companies to sell all of our information and give up our privacy. Uh, I don't think you can blame Trump for that. No. I think it's been going on for a long time. No, because it was uh, he overturned rules that Obama put in place to stop that. Hmm. I see. Uh, well, you know, it's it, it's been going on for years. Even though Obama wanted to stop it, yeah. Obama did plenty of other things that uprooted our uh, privacy. Mm-hmm. Well, that started with Mr. Bush. Yeah, and uh, what was it called, Predator, or uh, the uh, there was some some sort of uh, listening system that they had uh, to protect us. It was Bush. Yeah, it was Bush's. Uh, Bush put through something that uh, it was some software that uh, would listen to conversations to determine if there were. Uh, things going on that were uh, bad for our health. And those kinds of things always have really patriotic names like the Patriot Act. Right. Yeah. That, that's what it was. Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. Predator, Patriot Act, same thing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, well, the Predator <laughs> Act, they're changing the name to the Weinstein Act now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that guy, I think he's getting a raw deal. Oh. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, now, if he raped women, then he should suffer. But if he it was just a casting couch and he said, look, if you want this part, you sleep with me, and they agreed to it. You apparently, I mean, apparently, apparently, Phil, you haven't been following this story. <laughs> I mean, there are women who are telling never... stories that they he, he walked into their room at night while they were sleeping in their hotel room woke him up and then pulled out his dick and started jerking off in front of them. And yeah. at one time he even came in a potted plant. <laughs> now, you know, I mean, uh, this isn't just, you know, a, a, a bad rap because of the casting couch and because they said, okay, I want the part here. I'll spread my legs. No, it was more than that. He didn't ask them to spread yeah, their legs was- to get the part. I- so these are people that are accusing him, and they seem to be coming out of the woodwork right now, just like they did with Cosby. Uh, you know, 
that all of a sudden you start hearing these stories that uh, uh, you know seem to grow by the minute. You know, if this guy was such a predator, how come? Uh, it's only coming out now. Phil, Phil, be- Phil, Phil, Phil numbers, would, would, right. would you be willing? Would you be willing to agree with me that at least one of these <laughs> stories is true? Uh, some of them are, must be true. Okay, I mean, all right, all right. It, wait a minute. That's enough. That's enough. Let's say it's only sure. one that's true out of the fifty. One that's true. That's enough. Yeah, I don't know. You know, they're, they're making this guy out to be uh, well, a really how many bad How dude. many pumps do you have to do before it's against the law? You know, before it's in bad taste, but, you know, you're doing it because, first of all, you're doing it because you're a uh, 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 Hollywood biggie and they want to yeah. curry your favor, you know? And and then you put them yeah. in this untenable situation. I mean, I think, I think what he did was terrible. It was horrible. And yes, mm-hmm. it's been going on in Hollywood. It's rumored that uh, 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 Louis B. Mayer, uh, in his day, actually uh, had sex with Shirley Temple. Yeah. yeah. Molested uh, Shirley Temple. Yeah. Don, yeah actually, and their boys, they're having Wait, that. Tom? Uh, Tom? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There was a... Uh, Somebody resigned today. Was it uh, uh, Amazon? Uh, the head of Amazon Studios. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Resigned the under the under the the, the uh, suspect. You know the accusations that he was doing this. Uh, oh, yeah. Similar. Yeah. You know, so, I uh, I I think you know I I know what you're trying to say, Phil, but I can't feel sorry for the guy because as I said earlier a lot of people would be coming to his defense if he were a nicer guy. But he wasn't. Yeah, well, obviously he was a prick, you know. Yeah, and so they're happy to pile on the prick, and we're happy to see the prick get piled on. Yeah. Well, you know, Hollywood wouldn't be Hollywood without guys like that. Uh, yes, it would be. Yeah. Might be a nicer place. Well, you know, you might have you might have been able to have some better pictures win Oscars, except the fact that. Harvey bought everybody off and got his films uh, the Oscars. Not just yeah, you know, ever wonder how many. Uh, what, 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 wait, Rob, Rob, act- what? This is this is not just Hollywood. We're hearing about it because it happened to be this guy Weinstein. But it's go- it goes on in every industry. It goes on. It's just the way it is. If you have power, and you're well, in a position of power, and yeah. there's a woman who wants something. This is what they deal with. What gave this story its juice was the fact that a lot of big movie stars were talking about it, you know, yeah. and saying they had been uh, uh, accosted by this guy and so on. And that's what made it the really big story. But, you know, the, the other story that doesn't get told is that we're, it's all these, I am a woman and I don't want, I will not let this happen. How many guys in Hollywood, which is extremely gay, okay, have been accosted by male studio heads. Uh, well, uh, well, Rob Schneider, young, young Rob, boys. Too. Rob I mean, Schneider tells the story guys. of where a, a big Hollywood producer tried to get him to do something in order to get a part, and he just walked I'm out. Just he said, "That's if it." This is endemic of Jews because you got Weinstein, you got Wiener, uh, you know. Yeah. What about it's Cos- hey, Phil? And- hey, Phil, still on the bridge? Uh, no, I'm on Highway 4. Well, I was going to say, make a hard right turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, Woody Allen got some flack because he was saying that, you know, there's a, there's a pile on ethic going on here, which I agree with. But, you know, at the same time, he said Harvey Weinstein and what he did was just terrible and uh, horrible. So, whatever. Hey, listen. They got on Woody Allen. Woody Allen was not exempt from this as well, and his name starts with W also. <laughs> no, but his last name First starts name. with W. Conspiracy. But then again, his name does have wood in it, so, you know, I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much, uh, 
uh, to uh, 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 John Rockwell and to Mike and to Phil, who called us from his car because he. I think Mike has stayed asleep for the whole hour. Actually, <laughs> is he asleep? Yeah. Is, he, is Mike asleep? Oh, that's I think so. Yeah. We'll see if he's still on off. with Jack on. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I, I, he shows I have up on Jack's show. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jeff, thank you. Tommy Amaguchi, always love it when you call. Kevin, thank you so much for calling. I think it would be really nice if all of you just waved a big goodbye to everybody. Okay? Bye. Okay. That's our citizen panel for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and. Uh, uh, tomorrow night, we'll probably do the same thing we did tonight. We're going to do it on uh, on uh, uh, the GabNet Live, Facebook.GabNet Live. Okay? All right? All right. Anyway, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next, unless the reason I was getting that phone call is he's got a problem or something like that. If that's not the case, they'll be next. And then at uh, 1 o'clock this morning, Connections will be on the air. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, and uh, that's about it for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye.